Hey, it's Hazard, and today we're flying with the aggressors at top bases. Big one, targeted nose, 32 miles, 35,000. Big one, hostile there. Big one, target break. Base is 30, targeted nose, 20 miles. What's up, Motor? How are you doing? You. This Welcome is great. To top bases. Thank you. I got some badges for you, but we'll get in and get started right away. Okay, let's do it. Cool. Look at this. Looks like a hangar during a Hurvac. I'm at Top Aces, who own the first civilian F-16s in the world. They bought 29 of them from Israel, who is currently transitioning to the F-35. These aren't just for joyrides, though. They're being used by the Air Force as aggressors to help train fighter pilots. Let's go for a flight with them. Two, one, hack, zero eight hundred. Yeah, and welcome, Aces 5-1 flight today. Going out there for doing some uh, tactical intercepts, and we'll take that into a BVR engagement uh, to a WVR transition. Uh, objectives out there looking for 35 nautical mile locks, uh, shots in accordance with the ATRG, and then really looking for Billy Bob and I uh, effective BVR to WVR transition. We depart from Mesa Airport, which is down the road from Luke Air Force Base in Phoenix, Arizona. After taking off, we headed northeast on a heading of 070 until we reached the operating area. There we were able to execute our aggressor role, helping Blue Air train against an adversarial country's air force. Aces 5 1 is a contract adversary air company. We are the world's first company to own and operate a modern fourth gen aircraft, the F 16. All right, so these aircraft, definitely not Air Force aircraft. So, where'd you guys get them from? So, we bought these from Israel. So, they were initially uh, U.S. Air Force jets that were initially scheduled to go to Iran back in the uh, 70s. But uh, obviously, due to the political issues that happened during that time, uh, the jets were reallocated to Israel under the uh, Peace Marvel program. So Israel got these jets in the late 70s and early 80s. And then about five years ago, Top Bases went out and procured a sales agreement with Israel to buy 29 of these F-16s. I noticed a lot of markings on the left-hand side, typically in the Air Force, those are for kills. So what are some of the markings on these? Yeah, so uh, these jets, uh, of the 29 that we have, uh, we have 16 jets that account for 19 total air-to-air -air kills, uh, all against Syrian MiGs, uh, primarily MiG-21s and MiG-23s. There's also a couple of helicopter kills in there. That's the uh, Syrian Rondelle that you'll see on the left side. And then two of our jets were involved in the uh, Iraq nuclear raid. What are we getting set up for now? All right, so here you go, first engagement. We'll set up for our uh, first intercept. This is one there. Commit to one seven zero. This is one, one seven zero. That's a little bit different comm than we hear in the Air Force. What's he saying here? It's a single blue air 34 south of Bullseye, track north, block two. This is one. It's two, check ADSP. Yeah, so Baron Com. Uh, so one of the key things about the Air Force aggressors and something that we've uh, uh, ad adapted and uh, incorporated into top aces. This is one. Gonna be our target. So, one, five, zero, 25, and 19,000 track north. This is one, Orky. So trying to find them on our radar here. So essentially with Baron Com, you know, so especially fighting against fifth gen aircraft, uh, so we're going to have reduced radar contacts and reduced awareness, especially at those longer ranges. But Baron, through their control, can see. They basically have that God's eye picture, and they can see. Uh, this is one striker, slightly left of your nose, 11 o'clock low, 15 miles. It's one looking. 
it. Just got him on the radar. If I can achieve a lock. So Baron there helps me point exactly where I need to look, both eyeballs and uh, in with my radar. Okay, this one targeted. So in, the US, so, in, so in the U.S., the pilots are a lot more autonomous. So you guys are replicating adversarial countries where a lot more reliant on the ground controllers. Affirmative. So uh, just as you said there, right, in the U.S., we uh, basically give the authority to the flight lead, primarily looking uh, for them to run the game, game plan with uh, being backed up by GCI. Stand by, we're coming to the merge here. Tally one. This is one tally. This is high, back right. Five o'clock. Got a little bit of an advantage on us. Try to tighten down here. Cut the crest circle. Right nine level. Got nose position. I'm gonna jig up here a little bit. By a little bit of a far dead shot there. Try to get out of plane with him. Ten k to the floor. All right, he's got a good offensive position. Jeek low. Back up. Aces 5-1, kill nose 3 miles. They're across the tail there. Aces knock it off, knock it off. Aces knock it off. We're going to the uh, low altitude for now for fuel considerations. So these jets, even though they were built in the 70s and 80s, do not have those old avionics. Right? Yeah, so we've uh, done some upgrades. Okay, no have reported. There have been a few upgrades to the jet. Um, to uh, improve the radar operation. You know, some of our jets are still pretty much kind of the baseline uh, OEM jets, if you will, that, uh, with the minimal upgrades. And then we have our advanced aggressor fighter that is a, essentially a modern aircraft in, a, in the original body. With our advanced aggressor fighter, what we've been able to do is take uh, these older aircraft but put in a new mission system that allows us to operate uh, modern systems and advanced modern systems, such as our AESA radar, our helmet mounted queuing system, uh, Link 16, and IR search and track capability. Uh, and then we do that through a new modern multifunction display that we uh, have integrated in where the old radar display used to be. From that, I can pretty much operate all the sensors through that multifunction display and through my helmet with the helmet mounted queuing system. You know, there was a time a while ago when quantity was really what the Air Force was after, putting up multiple numbers of adversary aircraft uh, for our blue forces to train against. However, over the past decade or so, uh, we've needed more uh, quality, if you will, over that quantity. Uh, you know, there's a good aspect to having lots of numbers, uh, but as F-22s and F-35s have come online, and especially now with the F-35s, multiple fifth-gen fighters, and because of our adversaries bringing on, you know, fourth-plus and fifth-gen uh, adversaries or potential adversaries, uh, it's important now to have an a adversary that our forces can train against that can replicate uh, some of those adversary capabilities. Uh, so some of the older third gen planes just don't have that capability. Close right. Aces 5 1 break left departure end. Aces 5 1 left break departure end. Third close and roll out.
All right, Ray, I guess you're the one I should be thanking for yes, this flight. Yes, sir. So what's your title here? Uh, I'm the flight line maintenance manager, sir. So anything that happens on the flight line, I'm responsible for. So you're responsible for all these aircraft here? All these aircraft right now are nine flyers that we have up and running. Uh, yeah, I'm responsible for every piece of uh, maintenance that happens to it, all the scheduled maintenance, uh, the preparation for flight and all that, just managing the people, make sure they're doing what they're doing. So Snake was talking about these all came from Israel. What's that process like, bringing them from over uh, here, there to here? So I, I've been through that process. Um, I actually went over there with, uh, with our counterparts over working in Israel, and I taught them how to disassemble an aircraft. Most of them knew how, but they're a little bit rusty. So we uh, had to defuel the aircraft, uh, depuddle all the tanks, we yank the wings off of them, the engine out, the stabs, and the vertical tail. And then we, uh, we trucked them to Ben Gurion Airport and we threw them on an Antonov. And uh, late January of last year, our first four arrived. Okay, so you guys are shipping them over on Antonov. So are you guys taking off the wings? Uh, yes, sir. There's uh, 16 bolts that hold each one of these wings on, and they're underneath these panels. Uh, they come off fairly easy. Um, got a sling that, that yanks them off once all the bolts are out. Is it hard to put them back on? Uh, it's actually easier to put them on than it is to take them off, as long as you get them lined up properly. So you guys are stripping them down, packing them onto an Antonov like sardines, and then shipping them over? Uh, yes, sir. And then we bring them here, and we do a major structural modification to the wings themselves. It's called Three Amigos. And then we put the wings on them, uh, the stabs, everything else, do all the operational checks, and then we FCF them. How long are you expecting these things to fly for? So I would say probably the next 10 years easily. And then what kind of engines are you flying with? Uh, 220 EFIs, pretty much a 220E, sir. Uh, 28,000 pounds of thrust, uh, very light aircraft. They get off the ground quick, as I'm sure you just experienced. Yeah, yeah, we just did it after a takeoff, and this is the fastest I've ever accelerated on a jet. One thing I noticed is these things look a little different than what we have on US F-16s. Uh, yes, sir, this is the ad system, the IAF put on there. Um, allows us to carry more chaff and more flares. On this B model, uh, they're only down on the ventral, but on all our A models, they're also up, up top on the vertical tail. Is there anything else that's different about this jet from a US one? Uh, not much after that, sir. The engine's a little bit different, but it's, it's, it's basically a 220E, so. Awesome, well, thanks for your time. Yes, sir. No more questions, no more. I want to thank Snake, Ray, and all the other members of Top Aces for inviting me out. It's a world-class organization. Looking forward to seeing you guys next time from the blue side. Fight side.